Should you stop taking immune suppressants? Let's talk about it. Hey health heroes, welcome back to Adam Immune. This channel is all about helping you improve your autoimmune health naturally. So if you're into that, subscribe below. Now today is going to be somewhat controversial to say the least. So if you're not ready to be a little bit upset either way, uh, maybe you should just watch a different video. Just please make sure you watch till the very end before you judge me too harshly. Just remember, this is just my opinion and I'm not a doctor, so you know, do with it what you want. So I get this question a lot. Should I stop taking immune suppressants, Adam? And um, I'm always surprised when people ask me this because, I mean, I get it just constantly. This is from the Chronic Badass. Hey Adam, I found you from YouTube. I watch your videos and subscribe. Thanks Chronic. I'm stage three bro, and when I found out you were in remission, I got some hope, lol. That's, that's why I make these videos. I have a question. It's gotten so bad that Doc put me on an TNF blocker autoimmune suppression called Remicade. I've, I've heard of that. Have you ever been on a medication like it? What are your thoughts, and in your opinion, how can I get off of Remicade? When I don't take it, I'm bedridden again, but I want off. Well, first of all, my heart goes out to you, bro. Um, stage three is awful. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I, I really wouldn't, it's, it's terrible. Um, yes, I did find remission from stage three HS, among many other things. I'll get into those videos in the future. I'm, I'm sorry you have to go through that, that's awful. Um, I'm a little surprised, like I said, that people ask me this. Uh, I'm, I'm a YouTuber, not a doctor, but um, I do have some experience with this, especially with HS, so I guess it is sort of relevant. And yeah, this is what that video is gonna be about, so hang on. Yeah, I got notes, y'all. <laughs> this is gonna be a little bit of, uh, there's gonna be a little more science to this. I don't know, maybe not science, but there's gonna be some studies involved. So just, just, just keep in mind, uh, this, this is mostly my opinion. I am definitely biased, okay? Because I'm not a fan of the whole pharmaceutical industries. But I'll get to that in a little bit later. Uh, let me get into this, uh, <laughs> this whole issue here. Now, uh, let's talk about what is immune suppressants. What are they? According to Healthline, immunosuppressant drugs are a class of drugs that suppress, reduce the strength of the body's immune system. Some of these drugs are used to make the body less likely to reject a transplanted organ, such as a liver, kidney, heart. These drugs are also called anti-rejection drugs. So yes, like, like Healthline said, um, these were kind of made, uh, first of all, to help people transition after organ transplants. Um, it's a great thing because your body is gonna reject anything foreign, right? And other people's organs are all foreign. So you have to take the immune suppressant drugs to keep your own immune system from fighting those. Now, you know, some people wonder, do, do those people have to take immune suppressants forever? Well, the answer is yes, but after, you know, like six months to a year, they can reduce uh, the medication. Now, this is for people that are, you know, basically on their deathbed. They, they need an organ to survive, right? So if they only have a month or two or a year to live, you know, getting an organ transplant and taking immune suppressants for the rest of their life, whether it's four, five, 10, 20 years, that's a good thing, right? Even if they're are complications or more risk because of those drugs. The most significant side effects of immunosuppressant drugs is an increased risk of infection. So not only are you at an increased risk because you already have autoimmune disease, but now you're at an incredibly higher risk because you're now taking immune suppressants. And yes, you did have that risk before, but now it's two to three times more likely. Adam, that's not how it works. Just, just stay with me, it'll all be made clear soon, okay? According to the National Cancer Institute, immunosuppressive drugs make the immune system less able to detect and destroy cancer cells or fight off infections that cause cancer. So not only are they putting you at more risk, for cancer, they're taking away your ability for your immune system to detect the cancer and also to fight it off. So, <laughs> wow, that, that's, that's kind of crazy, right? As we know, cancer is directly related to autoimmune disease. They're just now figuring this out, but you know, to most of us, it's not a surprise because most people with autoimmune disease, really bad ones, end up with cancer. I mean, one in three people get cancer, right? Let's think about this for a second. 50 million plus people in the United States have some form of autoimmune disease. And what do we give to those people? Immune suppressants. And then they get cancer, inevitably, right? And then what do we give to those people? immune suppressants. So not only are they not able to fight off the infection that causes the cancer, because we're actually 
improving their chance that they get the cancer in the first place. So we're pretty much just disabling the whole mechanism in our body that fights off this disease. It's not only cancer, other diseases too, and I'll get to that. But how smart is this exactly? Are the best option for our own bodies to heal itself, we just take it out of the equation. Why? Do these chemotherapy drugs for cancer have that great statistical numbers for healing people? Do they? Well, I'll put it right here. Let's I wonder how good it is. Is it worth it? Why is it that the pharmaceutical industries and, you know, the medical community in general pushes chemo? I don't know. It's beyond me. I I'm not going to just say it's about money. I think it's a, lo a lot more than that. It's a complicated subject. It's about knowledge and training. People don't know other options. Uh, you know, of course they're going to tell them this. You know, that's your only hope. But, you know, a lot of people do have other options, alternatives, holistic approaches through diet and lifestyle changes. What do you think feeds cancer? Not all cancer, but some cancer cells, most cancer cells, are fed by sugar, glucose in the body. So, most of our diet is very high carb, which turns to glucose in our body. Why, why are we continually doing this vicious circle of feeding our disease and going, getting sick and then going to the doctor and getting these pills that make us even sicker long term? It is absolute insanity. I, I, don't, I don't know. That's why I, I don't hate these industries. I just don't understand. Maybe, there, maybe let me know in the comments. Maybe I missed something. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's, it's frustrating though, isn't it? But wait, there's more. Now people are talking about, oh, I want to take chemotherapy to fight my autoimmune disease. Yay! Oh God, why? Why do we do this to ourselves? I tell people stop eating sugar, stop eating you know, donuts and pizza and ice cream and all that. And that's, that's more controversial than going and taking these medications. Why is that more controversial? Not not just the sugar industry. There's a lot of different foods that it just depends on your body But mo a, lot, a lot of foods they act the same in all our human bodies. You know humans just aren't meant to eat grains They're not meant to eat legumes. What happens if you eat four kidney beans in nature? Do you know what happens you die really fast too and horribly? You, you can't eat these things in nature dr. Gundry says if you you know pressure cook them for so long that you make them edible and I don't know Maybe that's true. You know, it's I guess it's the lectins in the food. I don't know I don't know the science of it. I just know the facts of what's happening, but I I, I can't put it together It's like a puzzle that I just don't understand I don't I can't see the bigger picture unless the bigger picture is that the government wants to kill us all and in that, and I am not a conspiracy theorist. I am not. Just look at what happened to Alex Jones's channel lately. That is not who I want to be. They're making the frogs gay. I, I don't care. Honestly, don't care. Gay frog is a happy frog, right? <laughs> I, I don't care. I hate that I, this is what I've become. The, the next video is going to be a lot less controversial. I'm, it's going to be fun, and I'm going to enjoy doing it. No, I, instead I have to. I feel like I have to make this because. No one's talking about this. There is no video on the, on the internet right now talking about immune suppressant drugs and the dangers of those and why you shouldn't take them and the connection with cancer and the connection with disease and infection and, and uh, at least not in a, in a way that you can understand. So what is the drug that is similar to chemotherapy that they want to use for autoimmune disease, right? Uh, well, that drug is called methotrexate, also known as Rumatrex or Trexol. Now, I, I, I get people commenting this at me sometimes that, hey, wh what are your thoughts on this? Well, I don't know. This, this is the video for you, I guess. You're in the right place. Methotrexate, this chemotherapeutic drug most widely used by rheumatologists because it is effective in treating rheumatoid arthritis and certain other rheumatic diseases, such as certain forms of vasculitis or inflammation of blood cells, and is relatively safe. Well, relatively safe, huh? In 2004, there was a study done um, for people with rheumatoid arthritis, and they were taking methotrexate. But they found evidence that the drug can activate a virus that can increase the risk of lymphoma and similar cancers in some patients. Just know that all of these have their own side effects, okay? They're not without side effects. These are, these are far from safe, right? According to MedicineNet.com, if you are using methotrexate long term, a liver biopsy is usually recommended. It can cause some serious, sometimes fatal side effects such as lung problems, lung infections, pneumonia, you know, skin reactions, diarrhea, that kind of thing. Obviously, skin reactions, a lot of you 
have, right? Psoriasis, things like that. HS. All these immune suppressants are actually just made to keep the autoimmune disease from getting worse. They're not made to actually treat the symptoms, but in a lot of cases, they actually can lessen some symptoms. Okay, so what's the difference between this methotrexate and, you know, chemotherapy? Well, according to the experts, there is a difference, and that difference is methotrexate is not considered chemotherapy because it's a low dose. That's it, it's just a lower dose. So technically, they want us to call it DMARD, Disease Modifying Anti-Rheumatic Drug. So they don't want us calling this chemotherapy, even though obviously that's what it is, right? They don't want to be like, oh, you can go through chemo to get rid of your autoimmune disease, even though it doesn't do that. It doesn't even get rid of cancer, right? According to arthritis.org, a study published in the American Heart Journal found that in elderly patients with RA, a TNF inhibitor, like methotrexate or Humira raise the risk of heart failure. The effect of TNF inhibitors is clearly different on the heart muscles than it is on the arteries. So while it may have some positive benefits to some part of the body temporarily, not long term, it's going to completely damage other things like your heart. If you don't get cancer, maybe you get heart disease, maybe you have a heart attack. I don't know. Heart failure, kind of scary, isn't it? It should be. So these things are created to treat overactive immune system. Well, do we have an overactive immune system? Well, maybe. I don't think that's the right question or answer though. I think what we should be asking ourselves is, why is our immune system overactive? Is there something environmentally or something we're eating that's maybe causing these changes to our immune system to make it go haywire? Or is there something we're eating or drinking that's say making these, uh, making our immune system f try to fight it off like it thinks it's a toxin and it's trying to, ex you know, expel it from our system different ways? I don't know. I, maybe we should be asking different questions. Maybe. Because right now, we don't have any of those answers. Why are there no studies on why the immune system is doing this in the first place. But there, but there's all kinds of drugs to fight the immune system and to suppress it. Why do you think that is? I don't, it's rhetorical, I, I don't really know. Why don't we focus our attention on preventative measures, keeping people from getting autoimmune disease in the first place, keeping them from getting systemic inflammation that leads to chronic disease, like cancer. No one wants to do that. They just wanna wait for people to get sick, crash the economy. One could argue that it's the pharmaceutical industries. They are getting filthy rich off of our sickness. Can't make money if there's no autoimmune disease in the first place. But what do I know? Here in the United States, autoimmune disease is the eighth leading cause of death among women. The annual healthcare cost of autoimmune disease is 120 billion. Okay, that's a lot of money. But uh, why don't we compare that to the healthcare cost or burden of cancer? Anybody want to take a guess? You think it's lower? Higher? Higher, right? Well, you'd be wrong. It's only 70 billion. Let's, let's think about that for a minute. That's what happens when you treat the symptoms of a disease and not the disease itself. What's the definition of insanity? Doing the exact same thing and hoping to get better results? But no, we, we keep doing the same thing, hoping that our health improves, and yet, it's not, it's getting worse, right? Maybe something needs to change. Maybe, maybe our methods of healing need to change. Maybe our methods of eating need to change. Maybe our methods of living need to change. We can't change the world unless we change ourselves first. And that starts at home. Don't, don't aim for perfection, just focus on progress. Try to be better. I think that's, that's fair for all of us to shoot for, right? Okay, I want to give a shout out to this gentleman that is all over the Facebook communities for HS awareness and really autoimmune disease, Brian Schroeder. Now this guy has a heart of gold. He's out there making awareness for every for all of us and, and I really appreciate it. Recently he, he lost his mom to cancer. All our thoughts and prayers are with you right now and your family. I, I'm really sorry. Brian is a real health hero. Let me let me just say that you know, and and I hope he's a part of this community. I've seen his comments down below um, fairly often, so I, I know he's here, and I hope you're watching Brian. Now, Brian has talked a lot about him taking Humira and it improving his autoimmune disease. 
um, which is great. Now, somebody like him who has stage three HS, like I did, and like Chronic BA did or does, um, you know, life is really tough, really tough. So any improvement at all <laughs> is great, right? It's basically a miracle, and and we want to share it everywhere, and that is. That is awesome. So while there are some benefits to taking these immune suppressants, uh, there really are, and, and I will get more to that in a second, but just know that this video is just more about the risk and dangers, okay? Because I think, I think we all need to at least know what we're getting into, right? So we can make a fair decision. We need to see both sides, pros and cons, right? According to Medical News Today, Humira can have a number of adverse effects. Humira is an immunosuppressant, so it will leave the body more prone to infections, just like other immune suppressants. The use of TNF blockers has also been linked to cancer, including some rare and unusual types of cancer. So a lot like methotrexate, right? Now this is an article I found from Huffington Post on a study that was done in 2011. The FDA investigated Humira for 30 reports of childhood cancer and its links to lymphoma, leukemia, and melanoma in children. This year, the FDA warned that Humira can cause a rare cancer of white blood cells in young people and five patients died during Humira trials. That's, that's really disheartening to hear. You know, it's one thing adults taking these things, you know, because, you know, they're, they're a certain age. You guys can do what you want, right? I mean, you, you can drink, you can smoke, you can take medications, but these children, you know, they don't know. You know, these doctors are saying, hey, this is your best shot, right? Better take this medication. You know, we're always push medication, right? They don't look at what's causing your disease. They just say, hey, take these pills. You know, I, I remember a doctor trying to push medication on me, saying, take this for the rest of your life. Never told me about any side effects or not. I guess that's what the pharmacy does when they hand it out to you, right? It's the pharmacy's job. But uh, no, that's cool. If I sound angry, um, I'm not. And I, I'm sorry if I come off that way. Um, I, I'm not meaning to sound so self-righteous at all. I guess it's just frustrating. It's really frustrating because it's it's story after story, it's cortisone, prednisone, you name it. It's all the same. They do the same things. If it suppresses the immune system, I don't think it's good. So, would I recommend people stop taking immune suppressants for autoimmune disease? Well, no, that's not what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to make you informed so you can make your decision. And again, I'm the all natural guy, and I'm not gonna recommend anybody go out and take any medication unless it's life saving. How does the autoimmune protocol follow into this? How does it connect to all this? Well, I, you knew it was coming. If you start AIP, I'm not gonna say stop taking immune suppressants, but I would re recommend once you find remission or you see improvement, maybe you don't need it anymore, right? Like, let's say, I ne now, I ne to answer the question, he did ask if I ever took Remicade or any other suppressants and the answer is no um, that stuff scares me and I, I I want nothing to do with it because I know what can happen and it's a good thing I did too I instead I did the AIP diet found remission and but if I had taken immune suppressants and I started the AI, AIP diet then I would have probably tapered off or stopped taking it eventually anyway because just like in the medical study the AIP medical study done recently um, some of those people were, were able to get off their immune suppressants and stay in remission. So it can be done. But I will say this, don't start taking immune suppressants um, unless you are in a horrible amount of pain and you need it temporarily to um, ease off some of your symptoms. But I also say start the AIP diet and change your lifestyle and try to find other natural ways to improve your autoimmune disease in the first place so your reactions and triggers aren't as strong. That way you can slow your systemic inflammation and hopefully heal your autoimmune disease, okay? So use it as a band-aid temporarily. That's probably okay. All these things in this video were more about the risk and dangers of doing immune suppressants long term. Boy, that was a mouthful. <laughs> Sorry about that. Wow. Well, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed and you <laughs> you got some of the you can use some of this info and maybe you can relate to it in some way. I hope I didn't make too many people too angry. Um, just know that my heart's in the right place, okay? I, I, I say these things because I care about your long-term health. If you haven't already disliked the video and unsubscribe, uh, thanks for watching and thanks for making it this far. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, maybe share it with some other people if you found any of it helpful at all. Thanks for watching. See you next time.